planting season has come and gone at the Hutchison Brothers Farm in Caroline County. But today, they're putting something else in the ground. Today we're installing approximately 16,000 linear feet of drainage tile, that's perforated pipe, that helps remove the subsurface water in a farm field. Buried two and a half to four feet beneath the current crop of soybeans, these long black tubes called drainage tile will hopefully help alleviate one of farmer Kyle Hutchinson's biggest headaches, too much water. This is a very low farm, and when you have excess rain, you get a lot of crop drowning out. Literal drowning. This is a corn production map for 2018. The holes in the blue circle indicate total loss due to giant crop-killing puddles. 25% of the field died from being too wet. So we're trying to address that problem here. Turns out it's a pretty common problem on Maryland's eastern shore, where a high water table means farm fields can quickly become saturated. And good drainage, whether from surface ditches or buried pipes, can make or break a farmer's bottom line. But according to Tim Rosen, Director of Agriculture and Restoration at Clean Water Advocacy Group Shore Rivers, it comes with a cost. We're taking what was once a wetland, a natural habitat, we're draining it and converting it into arable land. And this causes water to be concentrated in pipes and removing nutrients a lot quicker from the farm field into our local waterways. Bad news for water quality. Those nutrients from fertilizer can lead to algal blooms and fish die-offs. Luckily, today's install project, partially funded by Shore Rivers grant funds, takes those drainage downsides into account with something called conservation drainage. The idea behind conservation drainage is that we want to maintain the drainage necessary for production, but also reduce the water quality impacts on that drainage. Here's how it works. When it rains, water filters through the soil and into the tiny holes in the tile before flowing out of the field. And here at the Hutchison's farm into a one acre artificial wetland currently under construction. And as the nutrients in this tile drainage come into the wetland, the plants help uptake that nitrogen and phosphorus. And as it leaves the wetland, it's at a lower concentration before going into our ditch stream and ultimately the Chesapeake Bay. And man-made wetlands aren't the only way to keep fields dry and fish happy. Last year at Rance Purcell's farm in Somerset County, Shore Rivers oversaw a tile project designed for something called drainage water management. It's been kind of dry this spring here, so I'm not sure there's not going to be a whole lot of water in here. This system relies on placing a water control structure like this one between the field and the outlet. The water control structure will essentially act as a dam. You can install or remove boards or stops in seven inch increments to raise or lower the water in the field. Whereas a typical tile system drains constantly, Rance can choose to hold back water in the field, giving his crops more time to absorb the dissolved nutrients. Right now, it looks like we've only got about 10 or 11 inches of water down there in the structure, which is pretty low. Still, across a 17-acre field, that extra 10 or 11 inches adds up to a lot of retained water and nutrients. At least, that's the idea. But to make sure the system is doing its job, automated samplers pull water from both everyday flow and major storm events to be taken back to the lab and tested for nutrient content. This conservation drainage practice is supposed to reduce nitrogen loads to the bay by approximately 30%. We want real world data to show that this practice is having a positive benefit to help clean up the bay. While also helping farmers do the important job of growing our food. Being a good environmental steward and also a good farmer, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. So we think they can go hand in hand. And this is an example of one of the ways that that can happen. 